Hey guys and welcome back. Today we're here for some easy and most importantly good tasting vegan meal ideas. Let me know if you're trying any of those out at home and if you do send me some proof. I love seeing your pictures, that's my favorite thing. And real quick, today's recipes are sponsored by Squarespace. Create your next masterpiece of a website with Squarespace and get 10% off by using the code MINAROME at checkout. Cauliflower is a one of a kind. I mean, what other vegetable can be turned into pizza, wings, and rice? So for recipe number one, we're making a peanut cauliflower bowl. Where the cauliflower almost works as its own meat substitute, start by cutting up the cauliflower in little florets. Remove the leaves and the core. The core can be eaten raw or roasted as a snack if peeled, just like with broccoli. I didn't know that until I google searched it just now. Preheat the oven to 190 degrees Celsius. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Add a little bit of oil plus spices such as cumin, paprika, and salt. Or whatever else you want to add. Distribute the florets evenly among the baking sheet. Give them a bit more space than I did. Roast them for 33 to 36 minutes. You can move them around a bit at around half time. Meanwhile, we're cooking our starch. I went the extremely lazy route and chose couscous. I added a tiny bit of um, vegetable broth powder. Plus, I poured in double the amount of boiling hot water. That is how you can get the best consistency for couscous. Let it sit and soak up all the water for 6 to 10 minutes while you make your sauce. Chop up an onion some fresh ginger, and some garlic. Saute all of them for about 6 or 7 minutes on medium-high before adding them to a blender or food processor. Add peanut butter. Then non-dairy milk, I didn't have any so I had to go for oat creamer and water to make sort of the same thing. Also lemon juice. Blend it all up and see if salt and pepper is needed in the end. The now roasted cauliflower goes into the previously used pan and now pour over the peanut sauce. You can add some more uh, liquid if needed. Just let the sauce warm up for two minutes or so. Or skip this step entirely and serve the sauce separately next to the cauliflower and the couscous and greens. Feel free to add other veggies such as cherry tomatoes, avocado, or yeah, whatever else you have at home. Um, and that's it. For the second recipe, we're making loaded barbecue lentil tortillas, a lazy version of the barbecue lentil burrito I made a few months back. For the barbecue lentils, combine tinned brown lentils with passata, spices, and barbecue sauce in a small saucepan. I made an even lazier version by heating up this can of vegan lentil soup from DM. I am pretty sure Osman and Anatua have almost the same product, so those work out as well. I let it simmer for a few minutes until some of the liquid dissolved and then added barbecue sauce and smoked paprika powder. While the lentils are heating up, cut up a few tortillas of your choice into eighths or quarters. Let them heat up in a big skillet for about 30 seconds on each side. If you want them to become crispy like um, tortilla chips sort of, let them toast up for a few minutes longer on both sides. Top off the triangles with some of the lentils. Add avocado chunks. A few pieces of thinly cut pepper for aesthetic because green and red go well together, you know. And finish it off with either some hummus or here we got some vegan aioli that I wanted to try. It was fine. A fresh herbs and spring onion and that's it.
For this third idea, we're going to be quick pickling some onions. I don't know why it took me this long to start doing that. Pickled onions are wonderful and they can be used as a topping for pretty much anything. For example, to top off a basic roasted sweet potato, add chopped red onions or shallots to a glass jar. Then pour in apple cider vinegar or white wine vinegar, add salt and sugar. Mix it all up or just close off the jar with a lid and shake it around. Let it sit on the counter at room temperature for 2-3 to three hours. Um, if you're making this the night before, just leave it in the fridge overnight and then you can keep it stored in there for up to a week, I would say. Roast up a sweet potato in the oven, you know the drill, for about 45 minutes to an hour depending on its size. Meanwhile, make a quick sweet mustard dressing by combining yellow mustard, white wine vinegar or lemon juice, olive oil or vegan cream like the one that you saw earlier, date syrup, non-dairy milk, salt and pepper. I also added some dry dill, why not? Pour the dressing over some fresh greens, add your roasted sweet potato, avocado, hummus, this one is falafel hummus from Aldi, highly recommend. And last but not least, of course, those onions, um, yeah. For last and final recipe of the day, we are making sunflower seed pesto rice noodles with tofu cashew cream cheese. What a title. Um, for this cheese, in quotation marks, first boil up some cashews in a little pot for 30 to 45 minutes. Add those to a high-speed blender or food processor. Next step, add plain, firm tofu. I wonder if silken works as well. If any of you try that, let me know how it goes. Lemon juice, white wine vinegar, salt, and pepper. Blend it up until smooth. Uh, for me, this whole process took about six minutes, so it was more like pulsing the blender, scraping down the sides, and then pulsing again. Cut the cherry tomatoes in half. Cook the rice noodles according to the packaging, some you have to boil, others are thin enough for you to just pour over boiling hot water. Set those aside and quickly toast up your sunflower seeds for 3-4 to four minutes on medium heat in a big pot or skillet without oil. Add those to a food processor or blender if you can't find your food processor. Add fresh basil, like an entire little pot of basil leaves, fresh spinach, lemon juice, one small clove of garlic, non-dairy milk or oat creamer, olive oil, sweetener of choice, salt and pepper. Blend up the pesto until it reaches your desired state of consistency. Now combine the noodles and the pesto. Top everything off with tomatoes and some of the cream cheese and add more spices if needed. Um, yeah, and that's it. So good. All the food you've just watched was brought to you by Squarespace. Everyone needs a website nowadays. If you're a student, for example, looking to present your artwork in a really cool and unique way, an aspiring food blogger, a new donut shop owner, Squarespace is here to help you create neat and professional looking websites and there's no experience in website building required. They have an award-winning 24-7 customer service. You never feel alone during this process and they do respond right away which helped me so much last year when making my own website. You can even get your own domain. Give it a try today and check out squarespace.com slash minarome to save some money and support my channel while doing so. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you soon. Bye.